For this final part of the programme, let us spend a few minutes looking at some models that we haven't seen on the bike show before. Some of you may have seen some of these bikes, but I doubt there's anyone out there who's seen them all. For me at least, one of the great joys of this passion that we share for biking is chancing upon bikes from the past, especially when it's a model or even a manufacturer that I've never seen before. These days we're so used to there being relatively few manufacturers, two or three major players from the US, the big four from Japan, and a half dozen or so from Europe. A hundred years ago though, the source of bikes might have been familiar in terms of geography, but there were so many more companies producing motorcycles. Admittedly, a lot of them were coming from what were little more than cottage industry workshops, but in an age where the industrialization of the world was still in its relative infancy, where flight was something magical and rare, where most people traveled on foot or in a cart behind a horse, perhaps on a train for a special occasion. The motorcycle, although still an expensive item, even in its most basic form, gave your average earner the real possibility of owning a motorized method of transport for the first time. As we all know, motorbikes were largely born out of bicycles. After all, the adrenaline-inspired entrepreneur of the times didn't need to be an engineering genius or marketing whiz kid to understand that the combination of a small engine to take over the pedaling duties and a price that put it within reach of a huge swathe of the population would prove to be a pretty big seller. When we think of bikes from this era, it's usually British, German or American machinery that comes to mind, but France was actually one of the motorcycling powerhouses of the time with many brands, lots of innovation, and of course, loads of style. Even at this most recent modest private collection that I visited in Spain, French bikes dominated much of the floor space. Here is just such an affordable bike, or a petrolette as it was known, what we might recognize today as a moped. This is the B1 from Motobican, a French make that was formed in 1923 and went on to become the country's largest two-wheel manufacturer. This was produced between 1929 and 1931, and as you can clearly see, it's a bicycle frame with an engine mounted in it, a 100cc two-stroke in this case, with the pedals retained for you to help it out when needed. Well over 90 years old, but still very desirable and eminently practical for short journeys, perhaps between the clubhouse and your home on the uh, lifestyle estate on which you live. Produced during the same years, this M1 model from the French aircraft engineers at Nome et Rhone would have cost you considerably more, but then it offered a lot more in terms of style and performance from its 306cc four-stroke engine. It could muster up a dizzying four horsepower, and though that may not sound like much now, it was enough, with its three-speed gearbox, to get the 120 kilo M1 up near 90 k's an hour. Way fast enough to contort the basic front spring and rigid rear end into all sorts of shapes and sizes. 300 k's an hour on a modern bike on today's roads requires nowhere near the same levels of bravery. If engineering quality and reliability rather than outright speed were your thing, then a bike from Tereau might have suited. This French manufacturer had been making machinery since 1862, branched out to include bicycles in 1890 and made its first motorbike in 1902. This 98 year old Type F was hugely popular and could easily maintain this 80 kilo bike at a steady 60 k's an hour thanks to its 247cc single cylinder two stroke engine. Once again, the only rear suspension is in the springs of the seat and the rider's spine, though you'll be so busy operating the bewildering array of levers that you will barely notice your vertebra slowly disintegrating during your journey. So there you have it. French bikes may not feature in the modern world of motorcycling, but they were a massive part of the growth of biking during the first half of the 20th century. I'd love to show you more extraordinary French bikes, but we've run out of time for this episode. Next week, I'll be definitely riding two naked bikes, if it doesn't snow too much here in central Spain. 
I kid you not, that's what the forecast says. Anyway, Don will also hopefully not be flooded out and be ready to do some riding as well. So, cheers for now. <laughs>